Hi there, listener. Thanks for tuning in to Walking in the Dark, the podcast where you send the questions and we send you help. My name is DJ and I'm your host, and I'm so happy you stopped by. Without further delay, let's get started. And don't forget, we're all in this together and we're all walking in the dark. For those of you listening to episode two instead of episode one first, that's totally fine. Let me just give you a quick rundown. People send me emails, reach me on social media and Reddit asking for advice on various situations, personal, emotional, and professional. And I read those emails, changing their names for security purposes and for privacy. And then I respond to them. They listen and they love it. If you have something that you would like help with, please send your email to wdidoradio at gmail.com. Again, that's wdidoradio at gmail.com. If you're a musician and you'd like your music featured in the cutscenes between readings and at the end of the podcast, please also send that to wdidoradio at gmail.com. That can be in waveform or mp3. This week we have some dope beats from Slimmy. I'll be putting a link in the description for his SoundCloud so you can check him out because I know you're going to love it. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to episode two, Walking in the Dark. I'm DJ, your host. This time's going to be a little different than last time because I got a little message for everyone here at the beginning. Let's talk about something super serious that can affect anyone. It is the vicious shock feet and wood floor syndrome. Just kidding. It's not a syndrome. This past week, Walking down the stairs, sock feet, devastating. Got a huge bruise on my butt, probably the size of like a softball. Did some damage to some ribs, trying to stop myself from falling, which I succeeded doing. Arr, so there I was, crawling across the booty, making up the beds, clean sheet contraband for me old five-year-old, you know. And I took my shoes off because they were dirty. Nobody wants to scurvy from the warehouse. <laughs> so, really though, I took my shoes off to make a bed because I'd been at a disgusting warehouse all morning and I did not want to walk across the child's bed that I was making the bed for with my dirty shoes. So I removed them. As soon as I finished, I had the forethought to think to myself, you better put those back on or you're gonna bust your hiney. Did I do it? Nay, I, I surely did not. What happened next? I busted me booty. Me booty. It hurt so bad, guys. I'm not even joking. I wasn't even going fast. I just had sock feet on clean hardwood floors that were very slippery. And I hit that first step on the ball of my foot. Went sliding down the stairs. And the rest was history. Luckily, I just kind of bounced down after that initial impact. And I didn't really damage too much. Pulled some stuff out. Sock it. And out of alignment. But my chiropractor fixed me up. And I'm just mostly sore now. But it's pretty sore. I've had worse, though. So, while you're out there and you're listening to this, if you're uh, wearing sock feet and you are are walking on hardwood floors please take a moment to put your dad bear shoes on you're gonna bust your butt and it is not fun i'll never do that again you know i think the worst part about it though was you ever hurt yourself and you think i told you so like as soon as you're done you're like mm. bitch i told you so i told you this was gonna be bad so don't do it don't be me follow my advice at the beginning of this podcast do not walk around in your sock feet on hardwood floors you will one day bust your hiney it might not be today or tomorrow and it hurts super bad all right let's jump into it we got a couple of different things to talk about today i've got first one here from i'm gonna call him don knots because i am a huge annie griffith stan so anytime i get to throw knots and don knots into the sentence well you better believe i'm gonna do it so my roommate in college is also my best friend we have had a great time living together so far a few weeks ago we were at a party and said roommate although a little drunk decided to kiss me out of nowhere no big deal. I was like, whatever. When we got back, she wanted to lay down with me. Also, no big deal. We're friends, right? This escalated throughout the week to cuddling, occasionally kissing, and lots of touching. I honestly knew it was a bad idea, but didn't have a huge overall issue about it. So I asked her over break if she had a crush on me, and she said, yeah, boy, I got a big old crush on you. <laughs> She didn't say that. She just said yes. We get back. Everything is great. Better friends than ever. Plus added bonus of cuddling and other touchy feel stuff. This past Saturday, she's all over me. I mean all over me. All over me. Like, 
mayonnaise on a hot grilled cheese sandwich. Dripping. Just kidding, I added that too. She slept in my bed most of the night. Nothing too crazy ensued over the night, so get your head out of the gutter. He wrote that, not me. It made it past kissing and touching, so over the past couple weeks, I started to catch feels. I know I'm an idiot, but I couldn't help it. You're not an idiot. That happens to everybody, but we'll get to my advice for you in a minute. Last night, she tells me out of the blue she's getting back with her ex, and she doesn't want to lead anyone on. It's been a tough turnaround from Saturday, and I honestly don't know what to do. Do I tell her how I feel, or do I suffer in silence and let her be happy? Well, I think you can let her be happy, and... You don't have to suffer in silence. Sometimes I think we have a problem with thinking that we have to do all or nothing when it comes to these emotional things. Like we have to either all the way be in or we have to all the way be out. We have to tell everything we know or say nothing at all. And that's never the case. There's always negotiation that can be done. And I'm not even saying like negotiate with her. I mean with you. Like decide. Is this a battle that you think you need to pick? Clearly you had feelings for this girl. My thing would be, hey, I'm, I'm happy that this is working out for you the way that you want to. Just be careful. You know, your exes are an ex for a reason. Every time I've ever taken one back in my personal experience, not that my experience is everyone's, but anytime you take someone back, mm, that's a big risk because they're exes for a reason. I'm not saying to write people off and throw them in the trash, but I am saying that think about things before you really jump back in. Like, you know, I know it's been like a while and he's probably not as angry as he used to be, but did he smack the light switch so hard? Did he crack the plate? Did he throw the cat against the apartment? Mm. Do you think he's still going to do that when he gets mad? Maybe. I don't know. It's tough to think about. So you might want to warn her because, and then you can throw in, you know, we've had our little thing and I got a little bit of a feelings for you in, in a way. And I still do care about you, even if they're not romantic and it's not reciprocated and we choose to just be friends still. You know, I still think I owe it to you as a friend and as someone that's connected to you in this way that I'm kind of concerned. And I just want to make sure that you're safe and you're happy. And I think that's the best thing that you can say to respond to that. I don't think you need to keep it to yourself. I think it would be irresponsible for you to do that. And that's just going to fester. And then you might end up losing a friend and then your roommate situation is going to get awkward. Because I find anytime you keep stuff like that to yourself indefinitely forever, it never goes well. You need to communicate things. Now, that doesn't mean you have to, like, always go full guns a-blazing, like, blah, 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 word vomit of my feelings, blah, 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 blah. Like, You don't have to go all the way, but you need to pick the battles and pick the right time to deliver it. So maybe just express concern, you know, you're putting on, like, an old dirty sock again, and that's fine. But just make sure you don't get, you know, athlete's foot because, you know, I really like your feet and I had, you know, special times with them. <laughs> that may not be the best example, but you get what I'm saying. Now he's going to think I think he has a toe fetish. I definitely don't, but you get the point. <laughs> oh, that's a tricky one, though. Anytime you entangle roommates in physical things, it can get tricky. I have been there, and that can be a hard one to deal with because it's your living situation and also your freedom. So if stuff gets weird, well, if the stuff gets real weird, it's going to carry on to everything. You're going to feel weird when you got to take a dump. You're going to feel weird when you go to make a plate. You're going to feel weird when you come in at 3 a.m. and you're drunk. You're going to feel weird all the time. You don't want that. No one wants to feel weird. So I would just be open about it. Hey, make sure that you don't get hurt because I care about you. And I'm glad that we had what we had. If that's not what you want right now or ever, that's okay. We still had our happy times. And I want the best for you. So please be careful. I don't think you should keep it to yourself. I think you should be open and honest with this young lady. Oh. Good luck, Anon. Thanks for writing, Don Nuts. Oh. <laughs> this one comes from Tristana. Anyone that knows me knows I love to play a video game called League of Legends and a champion that is fun on there to play. A little cute little yordle. Her name is Tristana. So this username makes me think of that. I'm gonna call this person Trist. Here we go. A friend of mine of about five years keeps asking for lifts now that I have a car. I don't mind if I'm going where he's going, even though his house is about 15 minute detour usually, but about once, twice a week I'll get a message from him asking if he can get a lift somewhere even though I'm not going. I feel like he's taking advantage of me. He said one time that he feels bad about asking for lifts but didn't actually do anything to compensate me for the lift. The lifts usually take one to two 
hours there and back home. I feel like I'm not getting anything out of it at all. On multiple occasions, I've driven him to the bottle shop, but he never offers me much as a shop in return. He's offered to pay me money for petrol once, but I declined as I don't care about the money. It's the time and the effort that I care about. It's so annoying to be doing something and then getting a message from him only for it to be him asking for a lift that will take about an hour. Is there any way of telling him that I don't want to be his chauffeur or should I just say it bluntly the next time he asks? This is a really good one because I think a lot of times we find ourselves in these situations with our friends, our family members, our loved ones, our partners. I mean, sometimes it's even professional where you have to draw a boundary and be like, look, you're using my resources. You're using something I can't even replace because you said it's not about the money. It's more about the time. And that's something that I personally am a stickler about. You're wasting my time. I can't buy more time. I'm not getting any younger. Like you need to respect me and understand that this is a waste of my time and I'm not getting anything out of it from you. I feel like you're taking advantage of me and you just have to draw the line and that sometimes can be difficult because it's like I don't know if they're going to get feelings that are hurt or sometimes we don't do things for the fear of the outcome and I think in this situation in a lot of situations where like this where it's like give me a ride do this do that do this if you communicate with someone and you're like look you know this is taking up time that I can't replace and I really need you to think about how this is affecting my life too and then they get upset well then you didn't really lose that much of a quality friend now did you because if you tell them that and then they're like, you know, I understand, I'm sorry, and then they make a change, a real change, not just, yeah, 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 whatever, I'll deal with it later, tap out the neck, right? If they really deal with it and they're not upset about it, then they probably just didn't realize truly that it was that much of a, a time waste for you or a time sink or a resource sink and other examples for people. So I think the best thing to do is just to cut it off by being completely open about it and be like, look, you're wasting my time and judge by how they react to that as though what happens next you never want to put yourself out and misuse your most precious resource which is your time because you're afraid of an outcome because at the end of the day you're still getting taken advantage of and you're still being put out so i think it's best to respectfully stand up for yourself and judge the reaction that the person has by the quality of the relationship that they really have with you and go from there thanks for writing hope that helps All right, let's go back to the romantic front, shall we? Oh, let's do it, yeah. All jokes aside, let's jump into this one. I'm going to call this person a Treyu because that's a band that I really liked when I was a young lady in middle school, in high school. And that is the only thing that I can think of to call this person that doesn't give away who they are. And we all know that being anonymous and being safe is number one here on Walking in the Dark with me, DJ, your host. <laughs> Dear DJ. Me and my high school sweetheart are reconnected. We're both almost 30 in a couple of months. We've known each other since middle school and dated for the end of the latter and through half of high school. First of everything together. First love, first kiss, first sex, etc. We've been talking for a couple months now and within the last mm, three weeks have started talking every day, all day through text and have seen each other about half a dozen times. Half of those times we were like five hours just sitting there talking about everything. On seeing each other more and everything, I basically completely fallen for her all over again and her response was that she cares about me but she ain't sure if those feelings are romantic so the issue that i'm having is that we're existing in this admittedly open gray area right now yet for most of our recent time together i feel like the question of her feelings for me now in the future have been answered basically we were out to dinner last night and for whatever reason she decides to start telling me about this guy she's been talking to and that she was planning on going on a date with him and to be fair i guess she didn't mention that they really didn't hit it off and she probably ain't gonna go out on a date with him again but the point to me is that she's essentially actively dating around am i crazy thinking that her being actively looking for dates as well as the fact that she decides to just tell me about this openly also coupled with the fact that her words in relation to what she feels about me i'm not sure the feelings are romantic yet that she definitely doesn't and will not ever have those types of feelings about me to me just being actively dating and then telling me about it while i know how i'm feeling about her just kind of says it all am i stupid for thinking this naive or maybe just reading it too much i don't know what do you think oh boy 
this is tricky when this happens and I'm not saying that it's exclusively females that do this but I would say the percentage is largely female that does this more so than male. <sighs> this young lady that you're writing about Atreyu doesn't know what she wants but she doesn't want to jump right into this with you because she's unsure and clearly you guys have a very special connection. So she probably is hee-hawing around waiting to make sure that before she does this, she does it correctly because she doesn't want to lose you as a friend. And if she does it incorrectly, then she's probably going to lose you altogether. And she definitely doesn't want that because you seem like a special patient man. So I said man. I'm assuming you're a man because you said she went out with a date with a guy. So if I'm wrong, please don't be upset with me. But she's telling you that she's not sure if these feelings are romantic, which means, hey, I really like you and we're getting along great, but I need you to pump the brakes because I'm not really sure what I want yet. So my advice to you would be to stick around and still be her friend. And I would date too. And now that she knows that you have romantic feelings for her, she's going to to either react to you dating someone else in a way that will let you know that your feelings aren't moot or they're going to let you know that you're doing the right thing and you're not wasting your time because we don't want to sit and be idle and wait for someone that doesn't know what they want yet. I'm not saying rush out and date like five other women and shack up and do all of these things but I would keep my options open and maybe just even mention you know I was trying to think about maybe going out on a date with Becky with the good hair or whoever because you guys have shared a lot about your lives and your friends and it could just be that she hasn't had enough time to get to where you are yet because of various things that have happened between our age now or your age now of 30 almost and when you were 18 I mean that's 12 years so it could take her a little longer to get there and she also said I'm not sure if the feelings are romantic yet that means she thinks that they will be. I'm not really sure what ended the relationship, but that may be something there that is causing her to take a little bit more time than you are there. She could have also had a lot of trauma between the end of high school and now. Keep that in mind. We all do a lot of growing up. I know myself personally, people that, a lot of people that I've connected with that I went to high school with have fallen to the wayside because we don't connect anymore. We don't relate to each other anymore. We love each other still, but we're not on the same page. She probably wants to make sure that that doesn't happen with you guys because you have a special connection and she doesn't want it to go to waste. I would do what she's doing. I would go out on dates. I would almost guarantee that when you go out on a date and you let her know that, that she's going to be like, mm, I need to make sure I'm not screwing up here because Atreyu is a really great guy and I really would like to connect with him in a relationship again or that won't happen and you'll go out on dates and she'll go out on dates and then she'll realize hey um a lot of these guys that I'm going out with kind of suck and Atreyu is a tits and she'll probably change her mind if she doesn't change her mind you still have a great friend and then you know it's time to write it off but I wouldn't write it off yet I would do these little like social experiments and kind of test the waters and it's not really manipulating her I don't feel I feel like it is helping you understand what's important to you and helping her figure out what's important to her and to see if those things are each other in a romantic sense and then you can go from there I don't think you're being stupid and I don't think that you're being naive. I think that when you reconnect with someone after such a long time, you want to make sure, especially whenever you can be friends and you're relatable. I can only think of a handful of people that I can sit and talk to for five hours straight about everything and one of them is my mother. So that just tells you, I mean, it's really unique when you have that connection with someone. So I don't think you're reading in it too much. I think that you are thinking about it critically because this person is special to you. You guys have a special connection and you really like her. You're falling in love with her, which means she's got to be great because we don't fall in love with people that are treating us like trash. We fall in love with people that are good at the beginning and then treat us like trash sometimes, but that's not what we're talking about here. You know, the, you get the point. You fall in love with someone that's great. You don't fall in love with someone that's like doo-doo butter. They become doo-doo butter later if they're doo-doo butter. They don't show you that version of them at the beginning. Yes, I said doo-doo butter. <laughs> Kaka. And, you know, it's not even about making her jealous. It's just about weighing your options, letting her weigh her options. And in all honesty, even if she doesn't like to see what is on the table here immediately, it's going to take some pressure off of her and it's going to help the, the friendship and the relationship. So when she sees, oh, he's dating, 
you know, he's given me some space. Okay. Because if you put too much pressure on her, she might retract completely. And then it's going to be really, really hard to get back through there because she's going to be like, oh, he was so pushy. And I just couldn't, I couldn't be myself. I couldn't be free. So date around, gauge our reactions, take some time, still be friends, still talk to each other. You don't have to write it off right now. You're not being naive. And I would go from there. Let's see how things turn out after, you know, you guys have dated around a little bit. And who knows, you might even mention going on a date. And she might be like, you know, on second thought, I really love you too. (laughs) I mean, that's happened in the past. And I mean, it wouldn't be surprising. And then if that doesn't happen, you know, you're giving her a little bit of freedom, which will in the end pay off as well for the relationship and friendship. But I definitely don't think beating yourself up or thinking that you're stupid naive or reading into it too much is going to help. You're just going to give yourself anxiety. We don't need that. We got enough stuff to be anxious about, right? We got the coronavirus over in China. Who knows how many people have that right now? And we have all the stuff in the ocean. Oh my glob. So we don't need to be stressed out about the people that we love. We want to be happy with those people. I really hope this helps betray you and I look forward to talking to you soon. Let me know what happens. Thanks for writing. All right, this next one, I'm going to call this person the cannibal, and they know why, because of their uh, tag handle. It's pretty funny. I like it, but I don't know how to change it without giving away too much of your information. So, you're the cannibal. Waka waka. All right, here we go. My mom actually thinks video games cause violent people and shootings. How do I change your mind? I'll make this extremely descriptive for you, DJ. I'm afraid of losing my video games since they're pretty much my whole life. I also want to state this is actually true. A week ago, an 11-year-old in Coahuila, Mexico, grabbed a gun and shot up a whole class before killing himself, according to Remizela, R-E-M-E-Z-C-L-A dot com. The shooter was recreating a scene from a video game called Natural Selection. He killed a teacher, injured six kids, and shot himself. He had also been raised by his grandparents. Where he got his guns was probably from his grandparents. I was in Mexico when the news spread. My mom thinks now that violent video games cause violence. Today, my little cousin brought his Nerf gun to the to a relative's house. He then pointed it at my older cousin as to pretend to rob her. My mom and grandma then said something about guns and toys. My middle cousin then said that shooting plastic guns are beautiful and fun as a joke. Then it led to my mom telling me about the news above that I had mentioned. If my mom actually is going to stop believing it, how do I change her views or at least let her tolerate video games? Please, I am scared. This is a hot button. This is a hot button, Cannibal, because we all know Every day, especially here in the United States of America, we have an average of 20 shootings a year. I saw a statistic just a few days ago that said that, and it is a big problem. It is a big problem right now that we are dealing with, and it is going through legislation, all these different things that are people trying to do. Um, In Virginia, just a few days ago, they passed three new laws where you can only buy so many boxes of ammunition you can only buy one gun a month and if you are passed down a gun let's say my dad gave me a new gun i would have to go for a background check which would be fine because i have no rap sheet but i digress so things are gradually and sometimes swiftly changing as far as this goes now i know that people like to say that these violent things are happening because of video games because they need a scapegoat humans in their brains need something to blame when violence happens so that they can make sense of it that's just how that we're made and that's how it will be but with this kind of thing i need you to keep in mind mom the first mass shooting happened way before video games were even a thing the issue here i feel more so than not is the parenting skills rather than the culture that we're living in so this young man had been raised by his grandparents so he had no parents he's been raising by his grandparents so he probably has some deep laid guilt and some weird feelings that i can't even begin to sort through because i am not a psychiatrist but this young man probably had warning signs that they didn't realize because they are from a different generation and they are much older a lot of times these things are unpredictable and removing the things in our life that give us culture and give us creativity and give us 
friendship, and connections are not the ways to go about it. If you remove video games from your children's household, or whatever the fun thing is that we're saying, back in the 90s, it used to be music. It was Marilyn Manson. They blamed it on Marilyn Manson. They blamed it on corn. They blamed it on the music. Okay, well, we all listened to that stuff, and not all of us were Eric and Dylan from Columbine. You know what I'm saying? So it's a scapegoat to have something to blame when the real issue is the absentee parents, the the mentality that we can plug our children into the wall and not interact with them. If your mom wants to be worried about something, she should be worried about the anxiety that our kids your your age and younger are having right now because of all this violence your mom should be worried about the video games if she's just plugging you into the wall and not spending time with you and talking to you and interacting with you and talking to these talking to you about these things seriously and helping you understand them and helping you understand that a lot of these things are not brought on by video games and by music, and by culture, and by movies. It's brought on by our environment as children and as people. Now, when you get older and you turn into, you know, the guy that went into El Paso and was like, man, I hate con- I hate uh, capitalism, so I'm going to shoot up this Walmart because we're killing the environment, and that's going to solve a whole lot of things. That's a whole different issue. But it's still the same. It's a mental thing. It's mental health. It's how they're being raised. It's how they're dealing with their feelings. It's how their it's how their environment is more than the video games. If she's worried about you turning out that way, pretty sure that you're safe based on the fact that she cares and she thinks that violence is going to hurt you because she cares enough to think that. But her caring enough is going to offset the violence that you see now I mean I do think it's inappropriate for a five-year-old to be playing Grand Theft Auto because some of those things are really hard to explain and kids don't kids don't need to know about the things that happen in that game you know I mean these kids that come in with these violent reactions to these things and they murder all of these people they're feeling something way more than just I want to be cool and do something on a video game. They're feeling some deep level of emotional disturbances that needed to be dealt with in a different way rather than just plugged into the wall to be raised by a computer or by a PlayStation or a Nintendo. And I don't think you fall in that case, Cannibal Boy. And I think your cousins are being silly. There have been many studies that have shown that children learn from roughhousing and playing violent like playing violently like wrestling and cops and robbers and things like that teach you social boundaries and how to react to things so they teach you like social construct and, and good and bad and how to interact with one another if we take those things away and we just put people in front of a computer and like watch this video this will teach you how to be a good person I don't think that's necessarily going to be as effective as we all know that you learn by experience most often than not. I think you should let your mom know that she cares about you. You have a good family. You guys love each other. She communicates with you. She worries about you. You're not going to go and blow up a school because they did that on a video game. You're not going to take a gun into school and pretend to be Dylan and Eric from Columbine and shoot all of these people because you don't fit into this category with a severe emotional disturbance that is being neglected. Clearly, you're not being neglected because she cares. And I would thank her for caring enough to worry about you because it is a real thing. And we all worry about these things when it comes to our kids and going to school and if we're doing the right thing and if we're doing... If we're giving the enrichment that they need to be a good adult. And it sounds like that she is. Now everything should be in moderation. We don't know what screens, iPads, phones, things like that do to your young brains at the time. Because they haven't been out long enough. I am 28 years old. I'll be 29 in July. And in my lifetime, that's still not enough time to be passed to do sufficient research to see what these little screens are doing to your brain. So I think... In moderation, video games are fine. 
given that you're not sitting in front of a tiny cell phone or an iPad three inches from your face for 12 hours. Everything in moderation is okay as far as this kind of entertainment thing goes. We don't want to entertain ourselves to death, so do be mindful of that. But I would thank your mom for caring enough and be very upfront with her. You know, you care about me. You love me. Your grandma loves you. You have cousins that you play around with. Um, you have a good environment around you. It's hard sometimes to make sure that we protect ourselves from our environment, but we don't alter who we are out of fear, which changes our life forever and it kind of handicaps us in a way because who knows, you might be a huge video game developer in 10 years or using these video games might give you the technological skills to help us move to Mars. I mean, you never know. But that's not something that necessarily needs to be removed just because some other child is being rowdy, I don't think. And it's also important to remember that the media, the TV, the newspapers, the news anchors, they lie a lot. And they're going to blame this on whatever they think they can. I'm telling you, I've seen the news articles, I've seen the views, of, or I've seen the YouTube videos of the early 90s when Columbine happened and they were blaming it on everything they were blaming it on music they were blaming it on Mar they blamed it on Marilyn Manson and he had to like actively make a response to that in an interview think about that now it's video games now but back in those days it was music your cousins are being really silly and I think that you should let them know hey you know people really do that you should be careful doing that because you're going to get a bad reputation for being a wild person and someone that's violent and you're not that way. And if you get a reputation, it's really hard to shake it. So let's not make those jokes because they have a very serious weight to them behind them nowadays. And keep in mind, I mean, when my dad was a kid in the 60s and the 70s, they were watching violent westerns, cops and robbers and Indians and... I mean, they didn't do those things then because the parents cared about their kids and they invested the time into seeing how they felt and they got to play and be free and have fun and socialize, which is kind of what video games offer to our children nowadays. I know for me as well, I'm an adult full grown woman and a lot of my closest friends I have met through video games and I talk to on Discord on the daily and They've helped me in so many ways I can't even can't even begin to tell you. So it's important to not entertain ourselves to death and to not put ourselves in a bubble in fear of everything else. As long as we're doing the right things and we're spending our time correctly and doing our fun things in moderation, you should be safe. And don't listen to the news and the media when it comes to this stuff. They say whatever they need to by whoever is lying in their pockets with money. Think about that. Think about who we trust, Mom. Do you love your baby? Do you talk to your son? Do you interact with him? Do you care about how he's feeling? Do you talk to him? Or do you plug him into a wall and let him idle and raise himself with violence? That's really what it comes down to. The violence could be games. It could be comic books. It could be his own brain. It could be other people that he's interacting with that you don't know about because you're not there. That's really what it comes down to in my humble and honest opinion. Try not to be scared. Cannibal boy. Fear is not something that leads us in a good direction most of the time. It can make us our most innovative selves, but it can also make us our most debilitated selves. That goes for you too, Mom. Good luck, guys. I hope this reaches you on the best year. I hope to talk to you some more soon. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap it up this week for episode two of Walking in the Dark. Thank you so much for listening. If you have something that you would like me to read and help you with, please go ahead and email that to wdidoradio at gmail.com. 
You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Podbean. And hopefully next week on iTunes. Yeah. Please find the link in the description for the artist featured in this episode, Slimmy. The track that I used was called Oh My My. It is a stellar track. I hope you enjoy it. Here in just a moment after I finish flapping my yep. I'm gonna link the whole I'm gonna put the whole song in here at the end so you can enjoy it entirely instead of just the little snippets. It's a great. I hope you like it. I know you will. Can't wait to talk to you next week. And don't forget that we're all in this together and we're all walking in the dark. Ciao. Yeah